Commissioner, uh, comments, questions? Commissioner Howe? Thank you. Um, so I saw on your charts that you mentioned uh, that uh, radioactive, oh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, tuna, uh, the dosage you would get from eating tuna. Uh, are there other fish that uh, concentrate their radioactive metals? Yes. Um, there's been a lot of work done in Japan on you know, radioactive elements in, in fish, and they've detected very high concentrations in some cases. It appears to be very species-specific. And the reason I put tuna up there is that it's a, really, it's a highly migratory species, so fish that were raised, well, I don't know if raised is the word for fish. I don't know how much nurturing they do. But fish that were, fish that were hatched and, and um, matured in, off in the Western Pacific were exposed to a certain level of, of radioactivity, and then they actually migrate over the course of their life cycle into the Eastern Pacific. And over that time, the level of radioactivity um, that accumulates in their tissues decays away with, uh, with the elements. But it has been detected in tuna off the California coast. And that estimate of the dose you would get that I showed in that figure would be for someone who eats a lot of tuna. We're talking a subsistence, a subsistence level fisherman who only ate that species. Um, it's very likely that other migratory species that spent time in the Western Pacific and have come to the Eastern Pacific also would have low levels of, of Fukushima radioactivity. Um, among the species that have been tested that are local to the California coast, um, nothing's been detected thus far. Thank you. Commissioner Mitchell. I have a question, and this may not be your area of expertise, but um, what is the difference between the Fukushima nuclear power plant and the power plant, the nuclear power plants in California? Because I, I was, when I was reading about it, that apparently we have different types of, of nuclear power plants that could make this, you know, a different situation. So I'm just uh, curious about that or what you know. Yeah. I don't know specifically whether the type of reactor or plant that exists at Fukushima is, is the same as, say, Diablo Canyon or, or uh, San Onofre. I know that people have considered whether or not a similar type of disaster could affect the plants that we have along the California coast. But I, you know, I, I Maybe I can do another briefing report for you on, on that question. There, there has been some modeling work done if you had a, you know, a, a Fukushima-sized disaster along the California coast, how would the radioactivity spread? And you know, my recollection is that you know, a substantial number of people along the California coast would be exposed if something like that happened, which is probably not a surprising finding. I did want to thank you, though, for your great report and great presentation here. Welcome. Thank you. Commissioner Duclos. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Also, I want to thank you for your report, and uh, it's very useful. I, I had a question about debris fields, and, uh, and, and those didn't manifest themselves in the way that they were anticipated, but I'm wondering, are there, and you said part of the reason for the radiation levels was sort of the settling effect but uh, is do you see any um, any any greater threat for debris fields that might contain higher concentrations of radiation the, and, and are we still going to see this um, are we are we going to see, see this happen what the predicted you know, uh, outcome of of these debris fields working their way down the California coast well, um, I wish that um, one of our staff members, Eben Schwartz, who's in our public education um, program, was here because he's done a lot of work on Fukushima debris. And my understanding is that, yes, we have found Fukushima debris along the West Coast, but that the samples that have been tested have not had any detectable level of radioactivity. So without claiming to be absolutely confident, 100% confident in this, I'd say that the debris fields themselves don't seem to pose any 
additional danger you know, compared to these other modes by which radioactivity has been transported. Thank you. Thank you. If there are no other, oh, excuse me, Commissioner uh, McClure, I apologize. <laughs> yes, I want to thank you for your report because it's not often that a layperson can get through a 25-page plus report on scientific data and understand it. And it was it was so well written. I just really appreciate the information and and how you delivered it. It was absolutely excellent. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Okay, uh, Allison. Thank you. We one last item today, which is revised findings for San Diego Gas and Electric's proposal to relocate a substation in Chula Vista. This is item 12A. Uh, if you recall, in March, the Commission approved this project and added two special conditions. Uh, one requires SDG&E to, five, to provide $500,000 to the Friends of the San Diego National Wildlife Refuge to mitigate for wetland impacts. And the other condition addresses the loss of visual access by requiring um, $2 million for an endowment fund to support the uh, continued operation of the Living Coast Discovery Center. So these are proposed findings in support of those two conditions. Uh, we're not aware of any uh, objections at all to this, and therefore we seek your adoption of the revised findings. Uh, the motion and resolution begin on page 8 of your staff report. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Cox? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would move that the Commission adopt the revised findings in support of the Commission's actions on March 13, 2014, concerning the Commission's Coastal Development Permit E-11-010. And I would uh, ask for a yes vote. Motion, is there a second? second. Uh, motion and a second. And uh, I have no public speaking cards. Is there any unwillingness for unanimous yes vote? Seeing none, uh, we approve the findings. And uh, with that, I think we will move into our closed session at this point. Okay, looks like people are jumping everywhere. Commissioner Mitchell. Sorry. And then, um, and then Hope. So I've been reading recently about the Santa Barbara desal plant and them trying to get it up and running again. What's the status of that? What's our, what's our, sorry, what's our role in that? And um, what's the, a little more of the background the article I read didn't have. When, when did we approve it and all of that? Uh, sure. Thank you. Try. So the history here is that back in 1991, I believe, the, um, we approved a, uh, an emergency permit for the desal facility in the city of Santa Barbara. And then in 1996, the commission approved a permit for a more long, a long-term facility. Um, I don't know what year it was, uh, perhaps Commissioner Zimmer knows this, where the, the city decided that they didn't need to be using uh, that desal plant and started to remove components of it. I don't know if I'm on. Am I on? Um, so yes, we got word from the city that they now, uh, because of the drought, that they want to uh, restart a desal facility in the restart that desal faci facility within the city of Santa Barbara. Um, we started to have discussions with them. We actually have a meeting with them next week. Um, initially, out of the gate, uh, they believe that they did not at all require um, either a new permit from us or an amendment to that 1996 permit. Uh, based on the facts that we know at this time, uh, we disagree with that, and we wrote a letter to them, um, I believe a couple of weeks ago now, saying that we do believe that um, they need to get a permit modification for what we understand that they want to do. Um, and then we also initiated discussions with them about how the landscape uh, around desal has really shifted a lot since back in 1996. And we've learned a lot of new information about the effects of open ocean intakes, which is what we had approved back in 1996 was an open ocean intake. Um, last week I had a, a, a phone conversation with the planning director at the city, the city attorney and the assistant city attorney um, about uh, – what other local water districts and other local governments and private proponents of desal are doing first, which is to look at alternatives to open ocean intakes as a starting point and going offshore and doing these feasi feasibility studies, which is also being supported by these other agencies, because as you know, the state board is working on this desal policy, which by the way, we think it's going to come out in June. So. Um, 
Based on these conversations that we've had with the city, they are also going to go uh, next week, I believe, and present their proposal before the multi-agency desal working group that includes representatives of the state board, state lands commission, ourselves, about what they want to do. And then the very next day, we're actually meeting with the public works department and the planning department at the city uh, to talk about um, our recommendations for how they proceed here and to get more information from them regarding the facts there. What, what equipment have they removed and disposed of, and what's their proposal? So just to follow up, isn't there, I mean, you, you, was it approved in 1991 or 1996? In 91, we did an emergency permit. permit. In 96, 96, we did a follow-up. So isn't there some time limit on the permit? I mean, how does that, it's just... Or, or if they built it, then there's then it just is permitted. And well, I think I think it's the city's position is that they have an active permit that's vested, mm -hmm. and based on the facts that we r know right now, we think they essentially decommissioned it, and so therefore they should be getting a new permit. Got it. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hope. Oh, oh whoops. Uh, we're just moving into commissioner comments here. Uh, commissioner Duclos. <laughs> uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I just I wanted to follow up on that because uh, I had uh, I'd heard some news that the. Uh, I, th I believe it's a PG&E project there in Redondo Beach that uh, they did, had a demonstration desal plant there that is now going to, or is planning to go online, or at least the preliminary process of going online somewhere around the Doc Waller Beach area. I had heard that to be true. Uh, I'm wondering, given that there's a policy statement and given the fact that, you know, the Huntington Beach project is moving along, it, it does staff plan to bring it back a sort of statusing on desal throughout the state in terms of projects where they're at what's planned y yes we do as a matter of fact charles and i talked about this very question this week and thought that maybe in the summer it would be a good time for me and tom luster to come back and speak to the commission and i, I was thinking the best the timing of that would be good after the draft desal policy comes out from the state board and we're expecting that in june so maybe july or august thank you Thank you. Okay. Uh, now, Hope Schmelzer. Yes. Oh, yep. Commissioner McClure. Sorry. Um, I uh, yesterday w had an opportunity, a short conversation with uh, Charles about the prospect of the commission doing a tour of Banning Ranch next month. And I'm not sure how other commissioners feel about it, but for me, traveling up and down the state, it, it's it's extremely important for me to see a project and to see recognizing that staff won't have answers to this project but to actually give me a visual so I was kind of maybe asking to see if there's consensus on the Commission that people are in support of that kind of uh, activity well uh, I'll just speak to say that uh, Dr. Lester and I have spoken about it, Sherilyn and I have spoken about it, and I, I believe that every effort is being made to make that work for next month, but there still are some uncertainties around the agenda. Charles, right, that's, yeah, that's basically what it is. We, we don't know what the agenda looks like quite yet, so we don't know whether we'll have the time and to I, do that kind of thing. I think that there, there has been a strong interest on the part of a number of commissioners, including myself, to be able to have that um, that chance to visit the site to see this large project what's characterized often in public comment um, before us and so every effort I think would be good um, recognizing what you've said we, we are doing that and um, the other thing to keep in mind is exactly what um, Commissioner McClure said that if we do if we are able to get out there um, it will be an, probably an overview kind of field trip because there are many unresolved questions so there won't be perhaps the level of detail or certainty around certain things that people might want once they're out there. Right. I, but I, it, would, but I, it I, would be useful to see the site for sure. Very good. Okay. We, we just what? How about this? Commissioner uh, Turnbull Sanders, please. I don't mean to belabor the point, but I think this um, dovetails with my comment um, on the record. Uh, yesterday about or maybe it was the day before about uh, the need for commissioners when at all possible to see sites and I think that that this one certainly warrants a, a visit so I just wanted to weigh in on that um, issue thank you yes as a policy matter we always try to uh, coordinate field trips in and around the timing of items uh, and this is definitely a, a major item that you'll be seeing in some form in the future 
Thank you. Commissioner Zimmer. Uh, uh, just a, a question. Has the application been filed already? Uh, I, there was some issue about completeness. No, it has not been filed. Thank you. Hope. Thank you, Chair. We just received um, uh, we just received a decision in a case, and Deputy Attorney General um, David Alderson will report that to you. Yes, hot off the press this morning, we received a ruling from the trial court in San Diego that where the court upheld the commission's approval in the case that was in the San Diego Citizens for Open Government versus the commission. This involved the Reuben E. Lee Restaurant Sun Road project. Uh, basically, the court approved the commission's decision in that matter, and we'll be reviewing the trial court decision um, in the coming days. Thank you. And now that we have it, we'll distribute it to the commissioners. Okay. Thank you. Um, without any other comments and no more public comment, um, we will adjourn into closed session and uh, report out at the end of that. Thank you. Uh, at this point in time, uh, we are going to report out from closed session. I'll ask Hope Schmelzer, our counsel, to re make the report. Thank you, Chair. Um, in closed session, the California Coastal Commission received litigation information and advice in a matter of threatened litigation and gave direction to, to staff. Thank you. Thank you. And this completes the uh, May meeting of the California Coastal Commission.